Well, the committee looking at public service broadcasting is uh, still underway. We've got Anthony Pugh here from Manx Radio, which is really, I mean, you and also Mr Mumry, who can't stay for the interview. Uh, it's all, probably really all focused at you, isn't it? I mean, we had a massive long session here this morning. You were getting grilled quite a lot. I've had a very long session. Um, it's not surprising, because Manx Radio is the public service broadcaster of the Isle of Man, and yet the remit of the committee didn't have Manx Radio in it. So, you know, one begins to wonder exactly... Um, what the remit is. Do you feel like the whipping boy there all the time? Personally, no, but Manx Radio certainly, yes. Mm. You know, irrespective of what our viewers and listeners think of Manx Radio, the staff who work at the station are hugely dedicated. They put in far more hours than most people would expect anybody to put in. They don't get paid hugely well, and when the company comes under scrutiny like this on such a regular basis. I was going to say, it's only four years ago since the last time, right? Four years ago. But nothing really... Oh, certain things got approved, my, you know, certain things came out of that, but it, there seems to be a feeling that it's, an, it's not a jo- finished job yet. No, there, there doesn't seem a, to be a will to finish the job. It's interesting you say that, because obviously Ron Berry said he didn't think anything would come out of this. you concur with him then, that this will just be a talking shop with no final solution? No, I, w- I wouldn't concur with him there. You know, I'm hopefully... I- I'm very optimistic that the committee can actually come up with something which is a blueprint for the future. You know, we all know that public service broadcasting is changing at such a huge pace. You know, we're very aware that whereas the BBC was a giant... The BBC is not a giant any longer. It's um, Amazon, it's Netflix, it's all these other people, it's Apple. All these people now have commissioning budgets which dwarf um, even the BBC. And so, yes, it's right that there is scrutiny of public service broadcasting, but what happens is that it all is turned on Manx Radio and it destabilises the staff, it destabilises the, fin- the commercial clients who have been hugely supportive of the station over the decades. And that isn't good in a small island community. Yeah, you, you, on the, the commercial side, you, you took task with Ron Berry on how he came up with that figure of £5 an advert. You said that was just a promotion. I mean, do you concur, though, it can also be destabilising for the commercial players? I know that they, they knew you were in town first, but uh, do you feel it's... Yes, they knew we were in town first, and they knew the size of the audience. Mm. You know, one has to remember that the perceived wisdom for a commercial radio station is that you don't set up a commercial radio station unless there are 140,000 people. We have three for for 70,000 over 15-year-olds. So, Mr Berry accuses us of undercutting him on some things, but we lose business to Mr Berry and we lose business to Mr Turner. Mm -hmm. So, we are out there to get the maximum amount of money that we can for Manx Radio because all our money goes back into public service broadcasting. Mm. But at the same time, we're aware of the scale of the businesses on the Isle of Man. They don't have unlimited pockets. And it's about a matter of marrying the two together. We feel we've got that about right. Mr Berry doesn't agree with us. A lot of figures are coming out this morning. I mean, the cost of the AM renewal, the building work, a million pounds just to keep you... A dry, I think, as far as you, I can see you spent already, and you want clearly more money to, to keep that building or to be moved somewhere else. Well, Manx Radio is not wedded to being on Douglas Head. Mm. However, we have worked tirelessly with Treasury over the last 10 years. You should see the amount of reports that have been written. And there is a clear belief that us staying at Broadcasting House is the cheapest solution for all. And yet this comes up for debate time after time. And it's frustrating. We, like any other business, want to get on so that we can actually concentrate on delivering the best service for the customer. Well, it'll be going on without you because your job's up. Advertise, you've done 15 years, you're bowing out. I'll have been here 15 years and I'll be retiring in the autumn. A lot of your time is spent dealing with government, I think you said that as well today. Is is, is that the sort of... your the person that's next taking this job, Evie, will also have to just be dealing with justifying the money? Yes. Uh, I, I don't think that this will ever leave Manx Radio. You know, we are in the public eye and we receive a significant sum of money from government. So, yes, we've got to be accountable. And it takes somebody to do to be that mm-hmm. person who deals with all the various government departments. 
Okay, Mr. Murray brought touched on the ambitions into television, like proper te <laughs> proper television, unlike internet yes. television, yes. to take over like a BBC opt out as Manx Ray well, a Manx Alaman company, not the BBC running an, a, an opt out from the six thirty bulletins and that sort of thing. Is that where I'm uh, to get it right? Is that your idea? An aspiration, an aspiration is is that the Isle of Man is properly represented mm -hmm. as a nation. And the obvious place for that to happen is during the BBC opt-outs. And they happen about 7.30 in the... Is it 7 or 7.30? 6.30. 6.30 to 7. Yeah. And then the 10.30 to 10.42. Yeah. Those are the obvious places. Now, because we have dedicated transmitters here on the island, it is technically possible to achieve that. But it comes at a huge cost. Mm -hmm. You know that if we have 15 minutes of airtime to fill... We might do four or five packages. That could take two or three people a whole day to do. So you're talking of very large sums of money and large numbers of people to I, do I only ask this because I mean, it's meant to be a local TV station arriving here at some point. Yes. Would that deflect from their thing? Because they will be dedicated TV, your sort of radio, yes. with some pictures obviously now online. Also. I mean, I have to say, I don't see where this new proposed TV network has a value for the Isle of Man. We know, the pair of us in what we do, we know that there is a value in visual content. What we need is all those operators to work together to provide the very best for the public. And even though we know that internet and all these different platforms have got more people viewing them on a day-by-day -day basis, they still don't get to the same numbers as conventional television, and certainly BBC One television. And therefore, shouldn't we be putting our money into doing that? Well, I say our money. Mm. That surely should be where the BBC should be well, putting money back into the island. A new TV station, a commercial TV station, would also put pressure on you, I'm guessing, for finances. So, well, well, yeah. well it, yeah, of course it would. Yeah. Of course it would. And this is, the pot is too small here on the island. Let's talk about TT. I mean, that used to be a big money spinner for Manx Radio. Uh, my time there, it certainly was. It, you know, lots of adverts, lots of, you know, splitting the transmissions, running yes. Manx Radio, running Radio TT. It, it came today, you wanted, I don't know if you accept that figure, £100,000 on top of the subvention to, to do the TT this year is, I, and the Festival of Motorsport, I'm guessing. Is, is that a correct figure? Well, I think you know, what you have to bear in mind here is that Radio TT was set up purely to make money for Manx Radio. And there used to be a peak in our revenues at the beginning of the year, and Manx Radio used to drip feed that in to provide public service broadcasting for the rest of the year. As the department wanted to commercialise television and was under pressure to increase safety and to get television coverage and all the various things, and I have no objection with that, mm. but what they've done is they've gone in and they've taken the, ad the advertising sponsorship, or the sponsorship especially, that Manx Radio traditionally used to have, and we are now restricted. So, for example, if there is a manufacturer of tyres who is a sponsor, we cannot go to any other tyre manufacturer. Well, we can understand this, but what it's done is just close the door down. So as opposed to it paying for itself, the money now goes to the department, and the department then has to pay Manx Radio to provide the TT. And this is, I mean, I think you went for more, but 100,000 is, is what it will cost you to do? Oh, I mean, it sounds like a lot of money to me, but I don't know. You, I don't think it's appropriate it? just to say exactly what it costs. And the only reason okay. I'm, I'm being a little bit quiet about that yeah is if this is going out to tender next year... Which they talked about in there as well. Well, be we UK have been operator. informed that they are looking at uh, a UK operator... So a UK radio station would come in to do the radio, but you don't obviously... I don't really know very much more than you do. But it's open to, it's open to tender then, is it? Well, that's what we're told is going to happen next year. Now, this is... We obviously feel very disappointed about this, but... Yes, there is money coming in from the department to Manx Radio. What this does, it goes into the Manx Radio pot and it enables us to provide public service broadcasting of all its So it's a top-up to the subvention? I mean, you, yes. Well, you can call it that, okay. but it is to provide a particular service. When you leave, do you think you'll be leaving it in fairly good hands, the station? And, you know, what I was fortunate when I arrived here in 2003, the Darwin report oh. had just been completed. And money was running in the coffers, wasn't it, of course? Well there was an opportunity to develop and I had the very fortunate position of bringing in things like Ireland Life, increasing the size of the newsroom and really beginning to set the foundations of the public service broadcasting that we've, that, well, everybody hopefully on the island has enjoyed over the years. I would sincerely like to feel that in a few months' time that my successor has an opportunity to really build on public service broadcasting.